this chat open. There we go. Live chat, baby. We got that live chat, baby. See if anybody comes in here at all. If anybody comes in here at all. Sets. Hello. Just wait for people to come in. If anybody's going to come in, who knows? My channel could be Emmanuel Pinheiro. Hello, sir. Or, yes, sir. Hi, Hoodie. Love your channel. Jana. Jana. Hello, Jana. Yellow Submarine. Classic forever. Known you forever for life. <laughs> Bubbles Hughes. Prefers the story time. Maybe I'll have a little story time with this. I got some Subway. I don't think I've ever... Have I had like an eating live stream before? I feel like I should have some music for this or something. Um, yeah, I just... What time is it in Canada right now? It is 9 something or other. 9... Almost 9.30. Something like that. But yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I got, uh, we're up close and personal here, very up close and personal for this. I should get some background tunes, but the only thing is I just, I don't, uh, uh it's got to be non-copyright and I can't guarantee non-copyright with this. Fuck, should I do it? Should I try to get some, a guaranteed non-copyright backdrop sound for this? Put on some tunes? I don't know. Should I try to put on tunes? I do have to go get ranch. Okay, so I have, we, we side sauced it again. We have the chipotle here and sweet onion. And we're going to per bite it. Uh, my tunes, that seems a little aggressive. I got some Lay's chips here. You guys can ask me questions or something. I don't know. But I uh, also got a ginger ale what kind of cell we rocking i went for the cheap um the cheapest pizza sub hack so and then it's coupon season so 779 it came out to 880 and the dude there the young guy he's the owner's son apparently and we had a good chat he he just gave me back <laughs> he just gave me back the coupon he's like you can just have it and use it again so that was cool um all right, bear with me. I'll be right back. I might go get, see if I can load up a tune here. And then also I need to go get my ranch. Uh, but yeah, it's a pizza sub. And we'll talk about what's everything is on it. But no, no marinara. I could put my own tunes on, I guess. Yeah, I could put my own playlist on and just put it on quiet, I guess. One sec. <laughs> All right, life, life ain't life without a bottle of ranch too. Okay, let me see what I can conjure here for a, for a possible playlist of, uh, okay, lo-fi, chill, wait, lo-fi, jazz hop, royalty free. Copyright free music for creators. Do you, this better. This better be real. You guys gotta tell me when it's too loud or loud, or if you can hear it or can't hear it. Lake of the Woods. Uh, I've never stayed. Like I've never visited like that, but. I know of Lick of the Woods. Uh oh, that's a piano that's loud. Hopefully. Hey, yeah. Soft boy. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was all alone when I woke up today. That's tough to say that thought alone could suffocate me. But you gotta know I love my babe to the day that God, my foe, took my love away. Yeah, clogged my throat, let me flush with pain. Took my main reason for breathing and flushed it from the drain. As I remain, my frustration fluctuates. My custom made angel unjustly rushed into the grave. <laughs> A song about losing your lover, untimely. I don't know how loud that is though. Okay, we'll turn it down. All right, so, is it still too loud? All right, okay. We got a pizza sub, which we have to unravel. Yeah, yeah. Took it to the waterfront, bought us some ice cream when sightseeing saw the sun. <laughs> gotta freestyle it. Close in person, no. Whoa, whoa. Up close in person, no. All right, salt and vinegar, family sack. Love you and your content, following crews. Thank you, Danielle. Much appreciate. Much appreciate. Maybe I'll tell you. I went to the grocery store before this. If you watch my last ASMR, why is it so like blue now? To reset this. All right. So yeah, uh, it's a uh, pizza sub, secretly. It's just got the pepperoni on it, the pepperoni meat, wherever it is. Up in the tip top here. I'm gonna use it without my I just, cause I like it. It's just a hack to get like a deli style saw. Why is it, why do I look blue? What happened to the light? Okay. I'm so scatterbrained. Let's pour up though. I got a ginger ale. And, uh, wow, the peppers are huge. Spicy Italian where it's at. Yeah, I was just trying to be on the cheap right now. It was just, I had a coupon and I, I try to mimic the BMT with just getting the pepperoni pizza sub. Uh, no, pizza sub is just the pepperoni meat with like a mozzarella cheese with the marinara, generally, um, toasted. Just confused as to why you're not knowing your content 100% better than my friends. I appreciate that. I spit too much hot truth on my channel. YouTube don't like it. Um, but anyways... Yeah, pizza sub here is, it's the pizza, it's like the pepperoni meat with, uh, comes with mozzarella cheese and then whatever you want to put on it and then it just gets like toasted off. And, uh, and that, but I kind of like more like a deli, treat it more like a deli sub. And uh, I just like to do it up with these sauces, the chipotle and the sweet heat, or the sweet onion. I know, I know, chips on this album generally better but no couldn't do it right now because I just hate trying to stack them in and then the sub gets maybe too full and but a ranchy bite this is a sauce queen bite right here I haven't seen her in forever but this is a ode to sauce queen right here
soup. There's a pep and cheese. Mm -hmm. I wonder what's going on with sauce cream. She's been MIA for a while. Maybe having a rough go like I had a rough go. Funny that you say that. I can't go to Subway without getting a cookie. I'm not a huge dessert guy, so I always don't get a cookie, but they are good cookies. But hear this, so I was just at the Subway. And I was chatting it up with the, the kid there who was making my sub. And we were just vibing and um, I asked him if he ever watched any of those YouTube shorts channels where people who work at Subway or other restaurants have the POV, the point of view channel when they make their subs. And he's like, oh yeah, I, I've watched a bunch of those. I was like, why don't you do it at your, your store? Those videos do do crazy numbers. He's like, ah, I could. I am the owner's son and it could be good for your promotion, all that, right? But he's like, they make some weird Oh, well, thank you so much, Dag. Amazing. Appreciate you so much. Somebody just paid for this meal basically. After YouTube takes his cut for sure. Love you. Um he goes. He goes, um, they make weird crazy combos on there. I'm like, yeah, it's generally for the clout. And he's like, I watched one the other day where he put a bunch of veggies and shit, and then he put five cookies broken up in the center of the sandwich. And I was like, <laughs> that's ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. And you know that whoever ordered that was just doing it to be silly for the internet, right? But that's fine. Mm. Jimmy John's or Jersey Mike's? Pretty sure we don't have either. If anything, we definitely don't have Jersey Mike's. But we have Firehouse. We have Firehouse. Is this music it, it, disruptive? Just, I need to know about the levels on this music. This beat sucks though. Let's find a better beat. Cooler view. I just want to know if it's too loud is all, is all. But anyways, um, as I say, uh, we have Firehouse, which is good. And then I want to say maybe a Jimmy John's. It is possible here, but I'm not certain. There's another one that I'm thinking of that I'm missing in my head though, that is something like those. Whoa, broke the cup. Well, that's what you got. Sir Randolph, thank you. Wow, you guys are very generous, thank you. I half returned. <laughs> Went through a dark crisis for a while. It's interesting how I really do believe a uh, viral load, a virus, getting sick with something like that can actually mess with your, your mental state. I believe, I'm not sure. I hope all is well with you too, sir. 
sure about enough. And thank you time and time again for the dono. I work a store and saw that a dude reminded me of you. Hello, Willie Vic. Thank you for joining. Appreciate it. I personally don't have any real lingering effects other than maybe a little bit of brain fog. I'm on my lunch break watching your live. Much love from Portland. <laughs> Thank you, you two. Keep on keeping on, keep on grinding, do what you gotta do. Surviving day to day, I feel that. Anyways, back to the long lingering effects. Um, the, uh, well, it's just, it's been known to say it. Actually, I, I, I listened to a radio segment like a feature on people who have had long lasting effects. For months and months and months, people who are, you know, they're kind of basically not bedridden, but they're having a hard time making a full recovery. And they have, it's called, it's called long C word. Yeah, I quit, we have quizzles too. Happy to see you're okay, man. You're a great YouTuber. I appreciate that. Just, I'm all over the place here, but yeah, there's people who have long lasting effects. And uh, to be honest with you, when I, we'll talk about my last video in a moment here. Second half. Yeah, the long haulers. I feel really bad for them because that sucks because what it reminds me of is years ago when I got my Epstein-Barr virus and that took me out for three months and I could like barely even that's when I went broke my life fell apart um you know ended up moving home and stuff and finding myself essentially homeless at the time but not really I had a place to live for a bit but I was lucky in that regard but um <clears throat> That reminds me of back then when I was the low, what is that low shit? <laughs> and uh, I just remember how shitty it felt being low grade sick for three months was just absolutely soul crushing and I would never wish that on anybody because you're just so you can't do anything you can't you can barely like go to the washroom or make yourself food or you can't really go get yourself food chronically sick over 25 years I'm in a prison I'm very sorry to hear that for you, and I somewhat know the feeling. I've kind of been there, but not for 25 years. I truly don't understand why, like, watching people that eat, watching people that I just do. It makes sense. It's just a, uh, it's a nature thing. We always think of our ancestors and think of even just going to family dinners and your whole life. Like, you grew up, like, if you had... Your, your parents or your siblings or whoever, you would just sit across the table and eat with people. It's like, it's one of the most intimate, uh, intimate and uh, natural things that, that we do as humans is literally just break bread. We just share meals. Best friend had the Guillaume bar. Wow, she was down for five months like Iraq. Yeah, I thought I had that when I had my. I thought I had that when I had my Epstein bar. I looked into to the Guillaume. But 
But um, I always said like I didn't bring, I didn't get any napkins, and actually I'll be right back. <laughs> they're not in a they're not in a real prison. They're in a physical sickness prison. They're in a prison of their own body. They are a prisoner of, like if you have a good diet, you exercise, you don't consume alcohol, you have a drugs, that's already half battle one for sure. They can mimic, mimic each other, yeah. Um, yeah, when I did my research on like what I had, it was, uh, I was trying to, I was just trying to find the right way to, to navigate, but what helped me really a lot was colloidal silver. Um, yeah, no, we're all prisoners of our own body, though. We're all prisoners. We're all caged in our flesh. I wrote that in a verse one time. My, my body is a place where my soul is kept, just a cage made of bone and flesh until I'm dust in the wind from the ash in the urn. That's what happens when you crash and you burn, burn, burn. It's not morbid to fly through the orbit and find yourself deep inside of a vortex, spinning in circles, out of control. You was living on the earth, but it's out with your soul now. <laughs> We all just in a temporary meat suit. Having a one time fun time experience. As trippy as it gets, we try to have to. Sounds like a deranged wrap. It is a little bit. It's a little bit deranged, but. It's just the truth. <laughs> right? I'm not speaking literally. Literally, I'm bed bound. I can say the prison. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's just real. It's just the real fact of the matter. It's like, it's not deranged. It's not like, I'm going to fucking kill you and kill me and kill everybody. It's literally just, I'm saying it's, it's not morbid to fly through the orbit when you pass. Right? It's not morbid to fly through the orbit and find yourself deep inside of a vortex, like a wormhole or whatever, whatever happens after. Spinning in circles out of control, you was living on the earth, but it's out with your soul now. Like, it's just... <laughs> um, some musicians and poets and like... To be a good musician, you have to have like a pretty, or to be a rapper or a poet or whatever, <laughs> you generally should have a really good memory. But there's dudes, that's why I was, was like, all these guys who are reading off their phone, I'm like, you have a strong soul, so never give them, do anything that makes you feel a bit better. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, I was gonna say um yeah that's what always bothered me about the new generation of people who are reading off their phones and uh i'm just like man that's that's it's not fake it's just a, it's it's a method in which people create and i know people are different so i shouldn't be a hater but like i'm just like if you can't spit from memory like if you can't recite from memory you get knocked down a little, a little bit of a, of a point. <laughs> but I also have an exceptional memory to my detriment, though. It's very haunting to remember, like, everything that you've ever gone through. So... What up, Kev? I saw you in the comments on the new video. The, uh... <laughs> I know the ASMR ain't for everybody. Yo, what's up, James? I'm sorry to hear about your mom, by the way. About the... Your, with cancer and everything. And I really appreciate your comment on my... My hour and whatever long video. So I hope... 
I'm as good as everything can be for you, right? In that scenario, it is going well, but also life is life, and our battles are our battles, and you know, things are gonna go the way they go, so. But yeah, as per my last video, I still wanted to give a little ASMR for the ASMR people, and then I have this new mic, thanks. All happened so quick, not sure what went down, but I do, but I don't. But I'm, all, I'm doing all right, okay. Well, it's good to hear, man. I appreciate that. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the bread loaf realized is up to some nefarious deeds. <laughs> not so sure. Well, yeah, me neither. Okay, so back at the cashier girl, so. I went in there tonight near close and she was the only cashier on like I was the only person in there other than the manager and that and so I I walk in and we had a funny chat the other day because somebody spilled like these blueberries and I've just had like funny chat like funny chats with her and then so tonight I go in and I'm like oh no 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 blueberry spills and she's like oh no unfortunately not but it's been a day and oh Dustin I haven't seen Dustin in forever Thank you so much, Dustin. So she goes, it's, it's been a day though. And she's got these deep, like, her eyes are crazy. They're so, they're so like magnificently lit. It's like aqua fresh, like winter green. Her eyes are like crazy. And so like, we're just having this crazy eye contact talking about whatever. And then, and then she says she's like an empath. Did I enjoy my trip to Bali? I was like, I know, yeah, I know what it's like to feel, to have that empath spirit. And you can feel energies and shit all day. And she's like, yeah, there's just, there's a lot of abrasive energy that comes through here. There's a lot of like, just, you know, not really aware people. And uh, anyway, so we're just chatting and I kind of go to go. And she kind of asks like another question to keep me to stay. So I turn and then she's just kind of like leaning in and all invested. And then... Um, and then she mentioned though, she's like, oh, this is just, uh, my side job. I, like, I just work a couple four hour shifts because my, cause uh, the new managers are my boyfriend's like parents or whatever. And I was like, oh, not the boyfriend. <laughs> so I got, she hit me with the, my boyfriend thing, but she kept wanting to talk. And I was like. You know a little shot through the heart but at the same time she kept wanting to to engage and probably because she's just bored as shit and doesn't talk to anybody nearly her age and you know what i mean doesn't have like a bunch of decent conversations per day and also in that moment i'm like Okay, leave it alone. I kind of, no, I didn't, I still talked to her for another five minutes. And then I was like, okay, well, it was nice talking to you. I'll see you like next time. And then whatever. But, you know, I don't want to be, like, even if, who knows what she's up to in her relationship and who knows if she's like <laughs> bored and not satisfied or whatever. But I've, already, I've told myself that I don't want to be that guy that person who interjects in somebody else's shit so like even if she does show interest to a further degree at all I can't play that shit anymore if they're not married it's free game I know it's such a bad thing to say to myself too she isn't married but I just, I've been down that road. And I know what comes with, with that, <laughs> with that territory. And it's like, it's just never good. There's always drama. There's always conflict. And I'm trying to e evade these conflict diamonds. It's not worth it. And honestly, 
that's you get a crazy ex-boyfriend slash each other. Yeah, shit like that. It's just you know what? It's not worth it. And honestly, like on a soul level, like karmically speaking, it's just a bad look to be that guy to to be the the interjector, the the stealer, the whatever you want to call it, the the cause for cheat. I don't want to be the cause for cheat. Like I said, I've wandered that path before. It's just weighs on you too heavily that that's more guilt and shame. And I, I got no more room for guilt and shame in my life, you know? But my friend does make a point. If she's not married, caught a fair game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, um, also, there was, there's still another girl there who was also attractive and cute. I say go for it, could make for some good story times in the future. Yeah, well, that's the living that fuels my story, right? Was your channel initially meant for self-therapy or to gain income? Curious. It was always in initially and for the longest time. It was just to give back to a community who like saved my life to make ASMR for the people who made ASMR that I consumed that helped me through like panic and anxiety and stuff like that. Um, oh, I got more crazy stories that just, I've never let them, I've never let them out. There's plenty where that came from still in the tank, but I got kind of tired of snitching on myself. That's why I got to make a channel called Hoodie's Hot Seat and charge like five bucks. Um, cause YouTube ain't, ain't paying the bills like it should in terms of like the effort that I put forth and what YouTube actually, what I'm able to get from YouTube. You got to find other ways to make income streams. But anyways, back to the beginning of my channel, it all started that way. And then I started making money and then I got more serious about like vlogs and cooking and da, da, da. And then once I started really putting effort into it and like getting software and learning editing and blah, 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 and upgrading and upgrading my skills and all that, then yeah, sure. Once you can make money off something, it became a passion project that turned into business, but it was always mutually both it was everything. It was all encompassing. It was what I love to do. It was therapeutic. I was teaching people. I'm helping people. I'm on my purpose. I'm sharing stories, recipes, entertainment, everything. It's all encompassed. And then I'm able to make money. So for me, it was all good all around. Like it is all good all around. I just would have liked to have prosper further. Like I, it, you know, get some. 500, 600 thousands, you know what I mean, type views. Shorts are what YouTube is pushing. I know they just switched over to monetize shorts. So I'm going to have to start, in, maybe I'll start like a shorts channel or incorporate shorts, but I hate shorts. I don't like TikTok. I don't like shorts really. Like I don't mind it, but I don't like crackhead content. Like, um, I, I just, I don't like crackhead content and I don't know how to make little stuff stupid shorts like what am i supposed to make on a short like what i don't say like, hey guys um i'm just trying this cookie today and then it's just like hey guys here's a new uh lighter i found or like some little skit or a kitchen hack i don't know like i don't get i don't get that type of content it's just so like <laughs> you know like crackhead scroll and i don't I'm not really about the crackhead squirrel. I heard that YouTube is sort of blacklisting shorts clips channel because they want people to upload shorts on their main channel. Oh, so they want them to integrate the shorts into the main channel to have long form and short form. I get it. So you don't make just a dedicated shorts channel, but I know people, um, Yeah, exactly. I just watched a short today with someone trying a Warhead soda and they get like huge views because here's what it is. 
the shorts cater to like generally a child, like a children, a teenager type audience, that new generation of just zoot, 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 and they're just interested in like bright, colorful things. And it's just, and it's quick, it's in and out, in and out, in and out. And it's just, I don't know, it's not for me. I, I'm, I ha, I'm from a generation of, but it's not even about generational, it's just what I enjoy. I'd rather do longer form content. I'd rather sit down and break bread, tell us a story, tell about a day, tell about an observation, blah, 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 a theory, anything like that. And then like cooking, like the cooking stuff and whatever. Like I just, it's, it's just more soul nurturing, fulfilling for me. But, um, this, this like, this new pack of Twizzlers, or I, I don't know how to explain it. People do some really funny shorts though, but there's lots of people who do shorts with like, they're, they're like planned and they have like a film crew and they're like, I don't know, YouTube University. I feel like they do have a channel or something like that. YouTube, since everyone learns from their imagine they gave certificates for creditable things. Yeah, I agree. Long form contest is what I prefer. Yeah, I just, I love podcasts. I love like documentaries. I like to be engaged and learn about this person, maybe, I guess. So, anyways. Um, no, I know. Isn't podcast something for you? You would probably kill it. Yeah, I think podcasts would, would be great for me, for sure. I've always thought about doing one, but it's just such an undertaking. My actually okay, here here let me run this by you. Um I don't think shorts is just before I go to this, I don't think shorts is an age thing because I know old older people who are love shorts, who are crackheads, like um Big Blue Eyes, hello, uh, best YouTuber 2010, still going strong, OG here from the beginning. Since 2010. <laughs> best YouTube for 2010. I haven't been on since 2010. Um Shorts give that falsified, falsified dopamine stimulus, and that's the thing. I don't even want to get trapped in that type of addiction because I'm already have my enough of my own addictions in life, right? Like that, I'm trying to like stave myself off from. But as far as getting like, I can't go, I can't live real life without my face in a screen that's just giving me a lottery of short dopamine. That's crazy. Um, but I don't think it's an age thing. I think there's so like I know a bunch of people. Sally Smith, thank you. I uh, well, thank you so much, Ten Skinner. Um, I know a bunch of older people, forties, fifties, who love scrolling through shorts. They love TikTok. They're on TikTok. They're creators. There's old, all lots of old people on TikTok who, who, are, who are creators. I think it's just how your brain works. Like, um, totally random, but you influenced me to get into Hidden Valley Ranch. Well, it is, in my opinion, it's 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 the greatest ranch on the market. It's an ADHD thing for sure. Yeah, and, and TikTok's insane. Okay, how about this? You want to hear something crazy? I know it's probably one of those, um, those uh, like those fake accounts. When you scroll through the TikTok lives, you'll come across like um, like a, an entrapment video, basically, where somebody's some hacker type person is feeding. Uh, a not so I'm a, I am on Rumble. I, I've cha I've transferred everything over there and then I'm thinking about creating a new channel over there. I'm in the process of transferring everything over there. It takes weeks because I have a thousand videos, so it's a slow process. So like all my videos are being transferred to Rumble as we speak. Um and then I think I might create a video over there or create a channel over there. But so the other day I'm on uh I'm on TikTok and I was scrolling through and there's this this like Russian-esque type chick, young chick, and she's in a tank top and she's got one breast out with a child on it, feeding. And then she's saying, like asking for certain like stickers that equal money. And she's like, for race car, for race car, other boob, other boob. Come on guys, come on guys. And I'm like, this is TikTok, <laughs> like what? What is happening on this app? It's such a corrupt app. <laughs>
she was in an airport. She was just in her bed. And then she's like, um, what are you, this is how, oh, I need to remember. Emerald Lagasse, what are you, what are your top two TV shows? I'll answer that in a sec. Uh, but yeah, no, she was in this bed and she's just like, and I'm like, how is this being broadcast without getting, without getting nipped off and snipped? Like I, it's just, it, it's out of control. And so I'm just like, I'm just sitting there. I'm like, is this real? And then people in the comments are like, um, no, this is fake. But then she started responding to the comments and moving around in the bed and like for a flash split second, got the kid off her boob, showed her one boob and then put it away and then moved forward on the bed and was like, four more race cars, please, please, four race cars, other boob, other boob. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, this app is crazy, dude. <laughs> I think those conspiracies about Chinese also rot brains. The people in the West might not be so conspiratorial. TikTok is crazy and seeing people get monetized so fast and the streaming. Yeah, so other boob, other boob, please, please. Four car, four red sports car, other boob. Two boobs, no problem. She kept saying, two boobs, no problem. But, um, <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. Um, uh, I'm so thrown off here. There's so many things going on. Um, as far as, yeah, monetization on TikTok though is, uh, I can't get monetized cause I'm, cause I'm, I'm in Canada. There's no creator fund. However, it is a good way to, to put your shit out there to, to get huge, to get seen and then people contact you and then you can make money like that way or like a song or some of you, like it, for me, like if a song could blow up, like that song, like the rolling down in the deep, you could call it a mental freeze. Like that song is so poo poo. And uh, that guy got like, he got a music career off it, but it's, it's, it's poo poo. I hate that song very, very much. Opinion on Andrew Tate. Uh, well, he's always hitting this, so I don't know. It's like, I don't know. I feel like Andrew Tate's like an industry plant at this point. I think he's, he was, he, he, he was sent into that position as controlled opposition, like for a reason. I think everything that he does is to direct the minds of mainly young vulnerable young men right i just i don't see how like he's got a lot of good points on on, on a bunch of shit and then a bu bunch of shit he's just an ego maniacal misogynistic insane person so like there's parts of tate that i kind of i can identify with some of his thinking cool but at the same time it's like his whole entire life and persona is built off look at me look how much i have look how fucking cool i am look at like look at all my cars look at this look at that and and then just de degrading women to like the low the lowest form um and yeah it just i don't know i i, I really think he was put into a position to to be influential to the minds of, 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 of very young men. Uh, I even read things about, there's like, there was these kids in a classroom, in multiple classrooms, and the, they had a woman for a teacher and they were trying to get her them to do like homework or an assignment. And, and they were of the school of Tate and they're like, they're like, you can't tell me what to do. You're just a lowly woman. <laughs> And just I don't know, it's crazy. It's I don't, it's nuts. Yeah, I know they're I know they're in prison for and clearly clearly they probably built their empire off some seedy shit. Like let's not be let's not be uh, naive here. Clearly the guy <laughs> probably exploited women in a pornographic sense for profit. I'm sure of it. At some point, like he even said he did. He told he admitted to, to all that. He was. He's like, we were running webcams with the females on the cam, but me and my brother, who are master manipulators who know how to manipulate men, would just keep, we would be on the keyboard manipulating men's minds and have the women in front of the camera. So, 
where's the nobility in that? Like, <laughs> is that somebody to be emulated? Is that somebody to look up to? Is that somebody to consider like, yeah, that's king shit, right? That's king status, but that's also egomaniacal insanity. It's not about it's not about being illegal. It's about ethics and morality. <laughs> it's about being a good human being rather than being an evil piece of shit. It has nothing to do with legality. You can bend the rules and loopholes and everything to do with law. That's fine. The, the law is corrupt anyways. Everybody is fucking corrupt. The cops are corrupt. Politicians are corrupt. Lawyers are corrupt. But it has nothing to do with legality. It has to do with, are you a piece of shit or not? as a person. So it's an ethical moral issue rather than a legal issue. <laughs> if you wanna get your bag up and you wanna own the world and you wanna be Luciferian in your pursuits, then so be it, that's you. But you have to live with that version of you when you look in the mirror and go like, oh, I exploited someone's sister today and robbed a guy via her human flesh. And I took a guy and I took a guy for his whole bank account. Now I'm living the good life. This guy's suicidal and I did it through a female, right? So it's just exploitation. It's like sex trafficking. It's just sex trafficking and, and manipulation. It's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's pyramid. It's dishonest. So if you can live with yourself and call yourself cool for that, then I guess that's your prerogative, you know? I mean, we all sold weed, right? Uh, but that weeds, that, that's such a different, it's just a, it's a whole different argument. <laughs> weed is just, I don't know if it's necessarily sex trafficking. It's sexploitation. Sexploitation, I would say. But I mean, it's, it's not illegal. Right? It isn't illegal. I'm saying it's a moral ethical issue. It's, an, it's, not, it's not a legality issue. And if these women weren't held against their will and they were consensual in it and they were, uh, they were enjoying being used that way so that they could get paid and live a good life that way for them and they're cool with it, then, then that's them too, right? I'm not saying it's sex trafficking. I'm saying it's sexploitation, though. But, I mean, if everybody involved that's in collusion together is, uh, is on board and they're all consensual in it, then it's fine. But I'm saying, yeah, so if women are coming out to express the opposite, if they are expressly feeling like <laughs> I, I, was, <laughs> I was used, held captive against my, like, you know, my will or my better judgment... Uh, then that there, there's some issue there, but I don't know. It has to do with how everybody in in the group felt doing it at the time. That's that's really what it boils down to. So, owning a strip club, I mean, I, hey, I, <laughs> there's a lot of sh you know you, you you run you run the risk of dealing with these issues when you if you own a strip club. Is all I'm saying. Um, to own a strip club, though, it, it is not illegal. It is perfectly legal. Um, it's legitimate work. And the women who legitimately work there, if they go and audition and sign up and they want to do it and they love their life doing it, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But <laughs> you're going to run into, what I'm saying is you're going to run into issues in that line of duty, let's say, because... There are going to be women who have changes of hearts along the way, or there's going to be drama. There's going to be drugs, alcohol, violence. There's, it all comes with the territory. So once you put yourself in that world, you better be ready for what that world has to offer you. That's it. That's all I'm saying. But it's all legal for sure. But, um... You're just going to find yourself in a boatload of like probably legal issues relative to, um, to, uh, almost, almost HR, like he, like your, your HR problems. 
because you have employees that uh, are working in a in, in a in a CD industry, and I don't think every all their pay is in the le isn't exactly legal. There's a lot of cash flowing through, that creates tax issues and record keeping and bookkeeping. And but everybody's on the dole, like or on, or on the pay on, on the that's not the right word, not on the dole, but like you know, cops come through and you shove them a few grand, and yeah, it's the license guys, the permits guys. That's how shit gets solved most of the time. Most people will take a quick couple grand and be like, yeah, yeah, keep on with the show. It's all good. Because <laughs> people don't want to do the paperwork. You know how much paperwork is involved with like busting shit with, for cops? Like cops just want to go, they want to get done with their shift. They want to get paid their salary for the most part. Sure, they're going to do their good works, but... For the most part, they're going to be like, I don't have the time to investigate and paperwork and blah, 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 blah. And this is a legitimate, this is pretty much a legitimate, legitimate, legitimate business. Lots of patrons, people to like, like depend on this place. It's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Just slide me a couple grand and we'll call it kosher. Yeah, strippers are actually um, independent contractors. It's, you are correct with that. Be quiet and you don't get the government on you. What enterprise we're on the strip clubs. <laughs> Watch out of the hoodie the, the hoodie the elites will be watching like I don't know. Not the elites. I'm too little for that. But they the but the they the the program that we have that we're on here being YouTube, it's already the AI and the bots, it all filters, it all disseminates through the algorithm. So you get it all like have you ever watched the movie Eagle Eye? But he didn't make men suicidal. He had to train the women. Paid to get naked to help. I don't know where you got that from. He didn't make when men suicidal. Well, what happens if when they got taken for for their whole bank account? Maybe that guy. Maybe a guy got suicidal. He had nothing left. You don't know the truth of every single person that they essentially robbed through manipulation. But the guy on the other end of the camera is also responsible for his naivete. Right? If you're a naive idiot, then you deserve to get fucking robbed through the internet, through 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 a, a chat, a, a, a naked porn chat where Andrew Tate's manipulating you through the other side. So, you know, there's so many angles to it. But if you're dumb enough to even be in these chat rooms giving away your money, then then that's your fault too. It's your naivete. Don't be an idiot. Stay out of the chat rooms. <laughs> Go outside, find a real woman, or just go to Pornhub. So Andrew Tate's woman who signed up and got naked, something wrong with that? Yeah, yeah, this is too deep. We've already gone over this. I, I don't need to go back to that. It's too simple. Um, what are we talking about? Oh, the, the govy getting after me. No, not the govy getting after me. It's just the... Uh, the AI and the, and, and the bots, like when you, when, when this video processes in, in the background, <laughs> some people in this chat, I can't, uh, I know, I, I, I hear that. Um, yeah, when this video gets processed, it will be sifted through, uh, decoded essentially via digital information, via computing language. And it will, it'll, it'll search keywords and phrases and, and it will instantaneously link them to maybe problematic things that have been spoken about in online and in the media. And that's how the algorithm and the bot and all the code, it filters out what it doesn't like. And it's like, okay, this video inappropriate, demonetize. That's how advanced the language is these days. And if you've ever seen back to the movie Eagle Eye, Shia LaBeouf, where basically Eagle Eye is this AI nucleus at the CIA that literally, like uh, like the eye of a bee, can has all these different ways of seeing 360 and everything, all of the information that's streaming into it at once and can filter and organize and surveil 
and give commands about shit, about what it does, does not like, who needs to get a hit put on them. Now we're not that far, but I'm saying is the central hub of these intelligences, of, of these computers, these supercomputers, they can do shit like that. That's how this all works. That's how the internet works. Massive, massive hubs of computational power, literally in warehouses across the world, <laughs> or maybe even underground and shit. That's how this shit works. So, and that's not even getting into crypto. Crypto is a whole other subset of, 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 of that. Mining for crypto. And it's crazy what happened with crypto. I wonder what's going to happen with crypto. Very, very curious to understand if, uh, if, uh, if it's going to come back up and be the new shit thing, or if it's kind of a, a hoax and a farce and a fallacy. Cody, what's good? Awesome. You make my man great investment. Yes, for sure. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Snoop A, what are you doing after your live? I'm about to smash this ice cream and rewatch The Last of Us. So I did watch The Last of Us episode. I, at first, I was kind of like, eh. But at, uh, as the episode went on, I got more invested in it. It was pretty cool. Uh, have you listened to Billy Carson? Never heard of Billy Carson. Glad to see you online, my brother. I can agree they were dumb to do that. Oh, I'll probably we're still talking about Tate there. Well, we need to well, we need to be a mass community of craziness to keep these conversations going. I believe crypto will fade out. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. There's just everybody's got so there's so much information coming at us at all times, and there's just so many opinions to form, and no one's ever gonna meet meet up in the middle. That's the that's life. Everybody that's that's the whole thing that makes life gives life texture and yeah, it creates tension and drama, but it also creates understanding and it creates, um, you know, almost progression and things like that. So it's, you know, it's always, there's going to be angles. We're always going to be at, at odds with each other, but I guess that's what, that what, that's what makes the game fun. Does Pedro Pascal do a good job as Joel? Haven't watched it yet. I think so. I think he fits the character. Everything cycles, crypto will too, but it will take a bit. Yeah, I think it's like, it's like bullish bearish, right? In terms of like the, the market. Same as life, seasons, everything. Yeah, I do believe. What's up, Jen? Where's, where's Sauce yet? If anybody has a line on Sauce Queen, it's Jen. So they're, uh, they're cronies, these two. As, as far as I knew or know, but... We all come together and tell our opinions. I think we could help each other if we, if we have one mind. Yeah, communication is key. If if we, I think the more you communicate, the more you discuss things, the more you open up lines of communicato, <laughs> then the further you can get with understanding people. It's just some people don't want to be vulnerable. People don't want to open up. People don't want the drama. People don't want the conflict. People just want to kind of shut up and get on with it. And, uh, you know, but that's, that's your own, everybody has that, in, that, that you're entitled to, to hold your opinion and keep quiet and just move along and not contribute to the conversation, right? So a lot of people just don't want to engage because they're just better off keeping their head down and moving through, moving through the bullshit and not getting involved and just going through the uh going through the the gauntlet of <laughs> and just being like ducking and dodging just arrows and vipers and <laughs> battle axes and <laughs> just ammunition rounds matrixing and it's hopefully come out the other side re retired and cabo and unscathed or something Yeah, so it seems like she was on the upswing, but dropped off the map again. Hope she's well. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, with well, Jackie. I haven't, I haven't even said what's up to Jackie. <laughs> Everybody needs Jackie. Still one of my, like, greatest, one of my better videos, I think, for views and stuff was uh, the Jackie vid, the 
the, the ranchathon, Pizza Hut ranchathon with veggies. And believe me, that's cool too. Trust me, I ignore every day. Yeah, no, you need to. You need to. You need to shelter yourself from the storm, the information storm. Sometimes you have to kind of put your blinders on at times and just move through with, with, with what you need to do, right? <laughs> okay, that's for Biggie. Uh, Steven Sushi looking to collab with him and hit him up. Uh, well, we'll see. We might have an interesting conversation if he ever wanted to, because I've kind of, I've thrown him a little shade along the way. <laughs> Not in like, not in like a hateful way, just in like a, dude, the pizza doesn't warrant X-rated moans is the only thing I ever kind of said about him. He just was too much at, at one point. I was like, dude, like I've had Domino's. It didn't make me come. Okay. So there's that a little explicit, but it didn't. Hoodie, be honest. You remember that one video you posted ages back with Kush? Of course I do. And that got my channel a hot strike and it made my channel stalling growth for months at a time because YouTube was like, oh, this guy's slinging swag over the internet. And then <laughs> they did not like it at all. <laughs> uh, Communication is key to everything. Some people are put off by it, but I found that they will, that they will not um, that they will not be disrespectful they will push back at times yeah it's just honestly like you can't gauge where you're at with somebody unless you have a fucking chat a deep chat like okay this is where you're at this is where i'm at how can we and how can we get past this and how can we move together forward like you have to have those they're hard talks though they, that's why people avoid them because they're hard talks they're confrontational talks they 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 stir up feelings that people don't want to face but you have to face them. Otherwise, what are you going to do? Stay stagnant, stay stuck. And then all of a sudden it's just going to blow up in animosity. You might even come to fisties at some point. Like you don't want to catch a domestic. You don't want to go to the bin because you couldn't just have a conversation. And that's generally where it comes from is just, we just need to have a conversation. Steven, <laughs> Steven Sushi diss tracking coming. He's so cringe, LOL. Yeah, I don't, he just, he's kind of always rubbed me a little bit the wrong way, but can't watch Quantra anymore. The lip smacking has gone over the top. Fair enough. Bro, I don't see you and Steven together. No shade towards him. He's just not, he's, or he's cool, but not on your level. Cheers. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, no, like, I don't know. He's just, yeah. I don't know. Just got done smoking. Perfect uh, timing. Well, I might be getting out of here soon. I've been out for an hour and something minutes. Make your moves now. Don't wait and don't second guess yourself. No, I need to. I've been battling my own internal demons about. Can we talk about how disturbing Nick Nicotero is? No, I've been battling my own self, my my self doubt demons and just motivational demons. I need to like find my belief in self again and motivate myself to go back towards things that I believe in and enjoy and the talents that I possess. I just. It takes planning, it takes belief, it takes energy, and it takes, yeah, just that unbridled, like, confidence that, like, I am who I am, and it can be bountiful. It can be fruitful. <laughs> Such an idiot. Uh, Nick Akato, I haven't watched Akato in so long, but... Yeah, he needs, I don't know what he needs, to be honest. I've had them in person and at work, and some people freak. I've been there where a little shit turns into big thing, then it could have been avoided if accomplished that. And that's it. Sometimes you just have to get to the bottom of things and see where each other are at, especially in a work setting, because in a work setting, you're going to boil at each other. You're going to get on each other's last nerve at some point, depending on who it is. Some people are just, you're really fluent with. It's easy, it's easy, it's easy sailing, easy, easy communication, but some people, it's not, there's that, and you gotta have those deep ones with them. Should head them up though. We all do, you have it. Thank you, sir. RG, I believe is a sir. I've always assumed, I don't know for sure, but you've been with me forever, so love, love you. The D Fire podcast with Oompa and Nick is decent. Oh yeah, 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 he went to, uh, you are classical, you're in a different category. Thank you. Um, 
Yo, that's the thing. That's what the last I did watch of him with that guy, the, yeah, the Dumpster Fire podcast. And he's like down in, I don't, can't remember, Texas, Arkansas, something like down in a gun, a gun type state. And uh, I will say that was pretty entertaining because it's normal. It's, that's when Nick's being almost like his character, like the, the stomping around and the funny outfit, like, that actually really works for him in that setting. And then also it's just when he speaks like a normal human being, he's actually like pretty interesting to listen to sometimes. But when he does his channel, <laughs> like there's two types of mukbangs, the overtop gluttonous ones and the more chill and laid back ones that eat normal serving size like you. Yeah, of course. Like the other ones are clearly you have to roll the dice and go, life is so fast, you don't want to look back and be sorry you didn't try, that's for sure. You are for sure correct with that. I love deep columns about the universe too, I haven't thought about it for a while in a minute, but a real deep column like that is so mentally healthy. It is until it's not though, I went way too deep down a rabbit hole recently, which almost like broke my brain. That's why I was in such a bad place too, and I'm not even going to say the word because I'm trying to forget about the concept because I hate the theory and I don't. It really hurt my brain. It really put me in a bad spot, like a dark place. And I, I don't even want to mention what, what the theory is on this because I don't want anybody else to think like it because it's scary, really scary. <laughs> um, what was I going to say though? There's something else. Angie Marie, she knows what's up. And Angie Marie knows about the chrism. Angie Marie, Angie Marie knows about raising the chrism. She knows about Jacob's ladder. She knows about the stairway to heaven. She knows about the 33 vertebra, <laughs> which is the stairway to heaven, the land of milk and honey, the secretions in the pineal. She knows the things. I'm eating wings, yo. <laughs> I almost got wings. Uh, I almost got wings today as well. Soon, probably again. Nick is actually very intelligent, politically educated as well. Unfortunately, he resorts to the circus act because people love Notorious. And that's it. And that's why I was just about to elaborate on about that point of like the, the chill people who don't eat the crazy and just keep it like, you know, and then there's the people who are the bear on the ball and the, the lion through the ring of fire. And, you know, there's those people who they do it because they, they're spectacles for the show, because the show lines their pockets and then their life is better because they have more, more in their pocket. And that's what we need things in our pocket to make life better, right? So it's tough. All right, I just went back through your vids from five years ago so I could show my friend you shouted. <laughs> yeah, it was when I told you I saw you at the Jays game with my mom in 2017. Um, did you, you just saw me there or there was one time where a, a, a guy and his date both saw me, but they like stopped me and pulled me over. And he was younger than me, probably early 20s. And I just was like, ah, oh. I was so like thrown off guard because I wasn't expecting it. And it just, it, it just kind of came at me, but, um, but yeah, cool. Gotta go to bed, but glad I caught a few minutes here at night. Good night. Why did this now give me an notification? I hate life to you. Um, that being said though, I am going to go vibe out too, probably because I've been on for 70, so hour 10 here. Um, have myself a delicious sub. This is about my dinner. And now it's coming into what time are we at? Oh, that's not gonna work. Is that drug house still rolling? No, it's completely shut down. No, nothing ever opened back up. So that's amazing. Like it just, that whole drama is out my neighborhood. <laughs> and I love it. I love that that, that uh, happened that way. Anyways, I don't know. I also, I got to focus back on like recording some music and stuff. I just, I know that my soul has been missing that part of my, my soul. My creativity, my just getting things out verbally over and recording and making music. I just, 
without it, I, I feel so pent up. So that's a therapeutic method for me, and I need to get back to it. I've just been, I don't know, I lost it somewhere along the way. I just lost any sort of hope, faith, belief, care for it. Oh, yeah, I've been writing. I have tons of music to make. Trust me, it's all in here. I got choruses, I got verses, I got, I got, it's this, I have so much in me that it's painful. And all I really wish, I really wish that, that if I had one wish in life right now would be like a, a six month, all expensive, pay, all expenses paid getaway to a studio with a, with a fire ass producer and engineer and just get to unload for like, it doesn't even have to be six months, even three months would be perfect. Three to six, give or take, and just have no worries in the world, no care, sit down with professionals, myself included as a semi-professional, I believe I'm pretty good with the shit, but, and just get to create and not worry about anything other than that for s four to six months <laughs> and make like so much music and figure out how to promote it properly and the channels and all that thing and just, just do that. Like, I feel like that would be so good for me. I just, that's not real life, but I wish. If I had a wish, if I had a make a wish foundation for me, that's what I wish. Really though. Uh, I, well, if I won the lottery, then that could I could just go do that too. So maybe the lottery, then then that. <laughs> Hell yeah, I play guitar mostly. Many other instruments. Guitar was my 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 release. I could play for hours every day and stop like five years ago. I got into drinking and I went numb, and that's it. That that's what happens when you give up your your artistic release, and then you find yourself deep in a bottle, and you just you're lost because when you're in the bottle, you're like, Oh fuck, I want to shred too. Right. Cause you, you got the, right. And that's when I write too. And that's why alcohol is so dangerous for me is because it lends to my creativity. So it's a double-edged sword. So, but when you give everything up, you find yourself drinking, you find yourself sad and hopeless it gets rough. Get it out. This might be the sign your soul needs. It definitely needs it. I tell you that. I got soberish though, and now I want to pick it back up. Yeah, you should, man. Like anything artistic that fills time and gets that release out of you. And and when you're in when you're in a creative pocket too, like you can you get like dopamine and serotonin too. It's like it's very good for the for the body. Like energetically speaking, in terms of the actual energy derived from it, the harm like the harmonics that are being released and then back into your ears and it makes you feel good and it's coming from you and you're, it's like a, it's a, it's an energy loop of like just good feelings. So. Yes, I'm still sober currently. I had a bit of a fall off um, when I was working with my buddy Maybe he wasn't the greatest influence on my life at the time. And I think it showed in the moment that things kind of fell apart for me a bit. But that was because about getting sick, more or less. But there was a little window where I was just kind of slipped for a bit. And this is just ginger ale, by the way. One liter, they're giving them away at the store. They're 57 cents. But yeah, no. Yeah, no, I, I had a little minor window of a slip, but I uh, I nipped it in the butt pretty quick. So we're good. The guitar was my release from like from life or something like that. From Can't explain how it makes me feel. The music is incredible. Yeah, it's for sure. Music is such a healing tool such a healing tool when you create it when you listen to it um i've been listening to lately i've been loving meditation music i've just been zoning out on meditation music it's so good and 
And that's another thing about the TikTok, the crackhead generation, even watching too much long form, I've been taking time late at, like in the later stages of my day, I'll put on therapeutic um, meditation music and I'll lay down, I'll shut my eyes and I just try to think, I try to clear my head really and just absorb the music. And then I also try to think positive thoughts and things that make me like smile or happy or like things to look forward to. And I try to not manifest it, but I try to live in that future in my head. And I just take in the tones and the low and the pads and the little hits of the keys and the string, just that really chill music. And I just kind of, I try to shut out all the noise that I constantly input via like video games, the daily world, everything, just everything, all the TV shows, da, 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 da. I just take like an hour, two hours to just center and shut it up. <laughs> Monk music chanting. But I'm not, but I know my spirituality and intellectual pursuits help me maintain my sanity for sure. Yep, I could agree with that. Nicolas, what's up, brother? Barato is here from Cleveland. He's here to orchestra. is great to listen to. So, yeah, or like, yeah, orchestral or operatic things are very nice. Anything with that um, on the major scale and but chill still. Like even this right now, that's all right now. Just nice piano. A little too much drums for for this, but it's chill, right? It's it's a little active live chill. So, um, but yeah, I've just been. Oh, I'll I'll show you like uh, this was this was uh, what's one I've been listening to. 